Now, as you heard in that report, Australia is ready to commit police to Ukraine as part of an international team to secure the Malaysian Airlines flight MH17 crash sites. That's according to Prime Minister Tony Abbott uh, when he was speaking on Wednesday. Now, he's dispatched 50 officers to London on standby. Now, John Blackslin is a senior fellow at Strategic and Defence Studies at the uh, Australian National University in Canberra. He joins us from there now. Now, uh, welcome to the programme. First off, tell us uh, what will be the expertise of these uh, 50 police officers? that have been deployed uh, to go into the crash site. What will they be doing exactly? Well, the Australian Federal Police uh, International Deployment Group has expertise in forensic work, deployable uh, forensic work in crisis situations. They have expertise from the Bali bombings, from uh, tsunamis, from crashes. So they bring a, a remarkable remarkably high level of skill and expertise to the problem and they undoubtedly will be focusing in on the forensics and trying to identify the human remains because we know there's quite a lot of human remains still unaccounted for and and of course uh, Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott is very eager to make sure that we get back all of the Australian ones but also help out with the Dutch and the other nations that are uh, still looking to account for their missed uh, loved ones. Right. But we know uh, at the moment, though, they, they haven't been uh, deployed into the area yet. They're still awaiting to be deployed over in London. Tell us, uh, when are they likely to move into Ukraine and who will likely accompany them? Well, the, the, uh, the Dutch have played a leading role so far and uh, they are likely to work collaboratively with Australia in deploying subject to agreement. Australia has worked very closely with the Dutch uh, on military operations in Aruzgan province in Afghanistan. So we actually have a pretty solid relationship and the police, the Australian Federal Police and the Dutch police as well have collaborated very effectively in the past. So there's actually really solid grounds for doing that. The problem is of course uh, we've seen uh, our Australian Foreign Minister Julie Bishop proactively engaged on the UN Security Council, getting the resolution approved, and uh, Prime Minister Tony Abbott working the phones, uh, making sure, trying to get in touch with all the right people, uh, pressing the flesh and making sure in a respectful and nuanced manner to get the message across that this is about trying to deal with the grief. Right. And my sense is that that's, that's kind of getting across the line. Right, but we know, of course, it's going to be an incredibly difficult mission uh, for them to accomplish. Uh, the, your Prime Minister said, uh, of course, it's controlled by armed men, the crash site, uh, armed men who've got a vested interest in the result of the investigation. So how difficult will this be? And briefly, uh, isn't it a bit too late anyway, a week after the plane crashed? No, it's not too late. Uh, the, bo the bottom line is we still need to account for the bodies, and there's still a lot of bodies unaccounted for. Um, but the right. thing is, that it's very tricky, and the, troop, the, the, the police that we're talking about deploying have a, a lot of expertise in working in Indonesia and in Australia's region, Solomon Islands and various other places, where they have developed the right kind of skill sets to do the kind of work in this remote, uh, contested space. Right. The real question is, how do we provide security for them? And will Putin guarantee that? Will he allow some kind of force protection element to go in? Right. Uh, there's an aspect here which is very interesting. Putin has has to trade off the prospect of increased sanctions right. uh, if he makes sufficient concessions by allowing this Dutch, Australian and perhaps another contingent the group to go in there and do the forensic work, recover the bodies and mm -hmm. bring back the evidence, then maybe he might be able to get the rest of the world off his back enough to see this through right. uh, to suit his interests. Okay, so, thank you. Still, for that. Uh, we've run out of time, but thank you so much for joining us there. Uh, John Blacksman from ANU in Canberra.